Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today, AMD released their 16.7.3 update for the Crimson Driver software, which brought along quite a few improvements and enhancements for their series of cards, but more specifically the 400 series and the RX 480, and I saw improvements in there. They were talking about a 10% performance increase for Rise of the Tomb Raider, so that is something that I did want to go back and test because that's one of those titles that was trailing behind the GTX 1060, even in DirectX 12 testing, by quite a considerable margin, and we'll be talking about those 1060s number here too in just a little bit. But even though the 400 series was winning in games like Hitman and Gears of War when it came to DirectX 12 testing, in Rise of the Tomb Raider, it's still falling behind. So I wanted to see what kind of, you know, these improvements could bring and if it actually could bring it closer to the GTX 1060. Now, before we discuss those numbers, I want to talk about a change that I noticed in the Wattman overclocking software. Previously, I was able to get my memory overclocked by an additional 200 megahertz, but the max I was allowed to put was 250 megahertz. So that was the maximum the software would actually allow me to put, but I could get it stable at an additional 200 megahertz. On the latest driver update, however, it is now limited to only allowing the user to, to apply an additional 50 megahertz onto the memory, which means I can't even get it up to my previous max stable memory overclock of 2200 megahertz. So I don't know why AMD has decided to go ahead and make this drastic change within the overclocking software to limit users to only putting on an additional 50 megahertz. I didn't see anything in the patch notes talking about this. So uh, yeah, hopefully AMD gives us an update on this and lets us know, you know, why we got this change here. And, you know, maybe there'll be some additional tweaking settings, you know, further down the road, which will allow us to, you know, adjust our memory overclock some more. But just, you know, looking at this initially, you know, it's, you know, pretty poor that I can only now put on an additional 50 megahertz onto my memory overclock. So you guys can let me know what you think about that down in the comments below, and hopefully we can get, you know, uh, a comment back from AMD on this. But looking at the numbers here, testing on the RX 480 and DirectX 12 for Rise of the Tomb Raider to kind of test the, uh, the claims of being able to get up to a 10% performance increase here in this particular game, I went ahead and put it through on 1440 and 1080p again. And on the previous drivers at 1440p, we saw an average of 41 FPS. And on the new driver, a 43 FPS average testing with the same settings that's, you know, maxed out with no anti-aliasing and no game works, but everything else is completely maxed out the highest that it would go. And we got a 5% increase in performance there. And that's going against the 52 average FPS that I saw on my GTX 1060. So still trailing behind the 1060 there is the RX 480 at 1440p. When we switched that over to 1080p, we went from 52 FPS to 56 FPS. So we got a four FPS increase, roughly 8% but still trailing behind the GTX 1060, which got an average of 76 FPS. So those are the numbers that are there that I saw in my testing. So we got a performance increase, you know, 5% at 1440p, 8% uh, at 1080p. So coming pretty close to that 10% that AMD was promising. So really good to see those gains, but unfortunately still trailing behind the GTX 1060, at least in Rise of the Tomb Raider, and also, you know, the, the memory overclocking there as well is, is kind of unfortunate, so hopefully we do get to hear about that again in the near future, but I'm going to go ahead and get out of here now, guys. As always, please let me know your thoughts on the testing and the all the information that we saw here down in the comments below, and I will be there to discuss it further with you. I'll catch you next time. Ta-ra.